This little tiered stand is one of my favorite things in my room. It holds a bunch of different trinkets, but I think my favorite is an old Vienna sausage tin from my dad that I turned into a pin cushion. And then at the bottom, just peeking through, you can see one of my other favorites, my watercolors. Today we're gonna to be using these watercolors in an unconventional way, and we're going to make the most beautiful paper flowers that you can put in your journals. What's really great about them is that they lay pretty flat, and so they don't put so much bulk in your books. And I just wanted to welcome you today, whether you're new or you've been with me for a little while. I'm Ingrid Carlson, and I am so very happy that you're here with me today. Today. I want to take a minute and just tell you my appreciation for your love and support and all of your comments in my videos. They honestly mean so much to me. I could never even put it in words. And if you're not already subscribed, this is a great time for you to pause the video before we get onto these lovelies and go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell so you get notified anytime a new video comes out. These are the prototypes that I came up with and I was so excited to film the video today um, after I saw them and I knew that they would be so good. My original idea was this one here, which was individual petals, but then I started scrunching them and I felt like it kind of gave it a more organic feel and not so calculated and I absolutely love them. I'd love to hear which is your favorite. Today we are only going to be doing the scrunched up ones like this one here and then I'm also showing you a fabric one that I did but we did not do a video or I did not film this one being made. If that's something that you'd like to see then leave a comment down below and I can definitely do another video for you. The process for making these flowers is pretty much the same for all three with the exception of the substrates that are used. I'm going to be using book page, also a natural like cone-like coffee filter, and then a regular white coffee filter that you can get anywhere including these that I got at Dollar Tree. I'm going to start off by cutting my book page into strips. Now, the more organic or wild you want your petals to be, then the more torn your pages will be. So that's up to you. If you want to use a ruler that has more of a jagged edge, then um, you can definitely do so here. Cutting the coffee filters is really nice and easy because of the fibers in the coffee filters. Another thing is that because of their make and what their purpose is, which is to hold a lot of grounds with water and water that's sitting for a long time, 
they are really great for this project because they're really strong and they hold water really well. I want to encourage you to step outside of your comfort zone and make your edges more uneven and less symmetrical because if we are trying to emulate flowers and in nature, things aren't symmetrical. They aren't perfect and aligned and it makes them more beautiful and more realistic. My prototypes yesterday did not include the regular coffee filters because I could not find any and I'm glad I made the trip to Dollar Tree today so that I could get some because I absolutely love the texture and volume and everything about the white ones. I am very curious to see which one is your favorite at the end, but definitely keep an eye out for the ones with the white coffee filter. The way that I tore the filter on the edge here still left me with a centerpiece that I'm going to be able to use in a further or in another project. And I think that I might add some watercolor. I think that would be a really fun piece that could layer in a cluster. Once I've torn out all of my strips, now is where the fun part starts and we are going to use our watercolors. Now, I want to say, if you have used watercolors in the past and they intimidate you, you feel uneasy about using them, it is uh, giving you anxiety just thinking about it, I want to encourage you to try this project because we are not painting inside the lines, we are not following any rules, and we are just laying color down. And it is so fun and therapeutic and just meditative to watch the water react with the colors and just trust the process because in the end you've already seen the end result and you know that they come out so beautiful. I found that the best way to go about this is to add a layer of just the water directly on the paper or the coffee filter. And then that way when the color hits the water, it expands and it runs and it just does what watercolor is meant to do. Now that means it's unpredictable, but that also means it's beautiful. My process is pretty much the same for all three of the flowers. I start off with a wash of my color that I want the petals to be. So in this case, it's going to be pink and I'm going to run it about three quarters of the way through the strip. Then on my right hand side, I'm going to add green for my center.
If you've ever stared at roses, then you know that they are corrugated or have different color striations through them. And a lot of times the edge of the flowers, especially as they start to fade and dry out, then they start becoming a little darker and maybe even with specks of brown. And so I'm taking some color that is deeper than the original color of my petal and I'm just adding it on the edge. Since the paper is still wet, the color wants to run and play with the other color and it is just so magical to watch. At this point, I'm going to dry it about 80% dry and then I'm going to crinkle up the paper. I find that with the regular book page, this is kind of an imperative step because it gives it more of an organic feel instead of being so flat and one dimensional. Just listen to this crinkle. I actually have some dried purple roses in my room right now. They were from my daughter's friend that gave them to her for her birthday that I have dried out and I have them sitting in a bowl and they're so beautiful and they were definitely the inspiration for this purple rose. When you're adding your color down, you can go as vibrant or as muted as you want. So here I'm going to add some pink to just pop with that purple. And then I'm going to take my paper towel and dab it off a little bit because I found that I liked more muted colors, but definitely if you are a bright and bold girly, go for it. Remember how I told you that our watercolor today was going to be unconventional and not like normal watercolor? Well, I'm going to put a little bit of a disclaimer on that. I do want you today to step outside of your comfort zone with one thing, and that is instead of using the color straight out of the pan or straight from your palette, instead mix them with other colors. If you look outside right now, look at the trees, look at the grass. You're not seeing just a one-tone green. You're seeing blues and oranges and yellows. And depending on where you're at right now, maybe you're even seeing the leaves already start to change colors, which lucky you. And so remember that in nature, it's not just one color. So practice. Worst case, you make a color that looks like mud, start over and try again. Or even better, use that muddy color on the edge and I think that you'll really like the
the the end result if you look here i have a little bit brown on the edges and i absolutely love that part These coffee filters were really so fun to watch and make. As I started adding the colors, first it started looking like a rainbow, but then it started really looking like a petal. Like if I were to take a rose and if it wasn't individual petals and I was to roll it out, that this is what it would look like to me. And I was amazed. The other thing is once it dries, it starts drying with almost like lines in the paper, making it look almost like a crepe paper, which is so fun. Because I'm working in assembly style for this video, I let the paper strips dry a little too much. So I'm gonna spritz them with some water before crinkling them up again. And then I'm going to take them and scrunch them up. Now, if you want perfect pleats, you can do perfect pleats here, but I find that the more imperfect, the more beautiful they are in the end. It's so hard to believe that these little strips of paper that are scrunched up are going to make gorgeous flowers. That is the beauty of creating things with our hands and just playing until something comes. So today, I want to encourage you, if you're inspired by something that you see out in the world, or maybe it's a video that you watch or a pin on Pinterest, just go and play and create something beautiful today in your room. Even... 
if the end result isn't what you expected, it might lead to another idea of another project for you to make. And I have a question for you. Have you had this happen where you start making one project and then it leads to something else that was even greater? And just to think that if you hadn't thought of that or if you hadn't made that mistake, let's say, then you wouldn't have that other project. I know that that happens with me all the time. Most of the time, what I have in my head is not the end result of my projects. And so you guys might see it and say, oh, she completed it from start to finish. No, uh, the usually, <laughs> usually my original thought looks very different than the end result. Now, on some occasions, it does look the same, but for the most part, it is different. And I had to learn how to embrace that and love that. And I would say this, if you can embrace and love that in me, then you can embrace and love that in you. I truly love all of the flowers that I made, but there is something so ethereal and just lovely about the feel of these white coffee filters. And if you don't know which one you're going to try, I would say start off with these if you have them because they are just so lovely. Even looking back on them now, I just see all of the texture and the lightness of the material and they are such beautiful flowers in the end. I'm trying something new out with this video and I am not adding any music in between the shots and I want to know how you like that. If you like listening to the music, which I really enjoy music as just part of my everyday life. I love the feelings that music evokes and I love being surrounded by pretty music. But I know that's not everyone's cup of tea, so I'd love to know if you could leave me down in the comments and let me know your thoughts. Now, there are times where I have to add music, but I want to know overall if you are a music lover or if you're like the more simplicity of just having the paper speak for itself.
Another thing to note is that this paper can have a tendency to burn a little bit if you put the heat tool a little too long on it it could crinkle up at the edges but i think that that adds a lot of charm as well but i wanted to let you know that that could happen how gorgeous are these edges on these papers it really is hard to believe that it was just normal paper that just had a little bit of watercolor added to them and they really do look and almost feel like dried flowers I'm going to take a piece of scrapbook paper and it's just what I had in on hand. You can use anything that you want. It can be just plain white cardstock. It can be junk. It can be cardboard. It can be anything you want. And I'm just going to freehand cut out some circles. A couple of things here. You can 100% use a punch if you want and have all your circles be the same size. Number two is that depending on how big your circle is, is going to be how big your flower is. I have my circles pretty small here, and if you compare them to the prototypes, they were a lot bigger. And so I was able to make the flowers smaller, and I was able to add more texture to them by scrunching the paper more to make it fit into the smaller circle. So if you want a more loose leaf or petal, then you're going to want to make your circles bigger. And if you want it smaller, like I did here, then of course, make them a little smaller. And this is my biggest disclaimer of the night, is that be very careful. <laughs> hot glue is really hot and it will burn your fingers and it burned me several times. I don't know if you can tell or not. I actually was watching a show, so I have this part muted and so you can't hear me say like, ow, that was hot or whatever it was that I said. <laughs> But um, be very careful. And that's another thing. If you have very small circles that you're adhering it to, then be very, very careful. And you might want to wear something to guard your fingers here. Now, I'm just taking my papers and adding them a little bit of glue at a time and then adding the flowers. If you, or the, the strips of paper that are my petals. If you find that you are going to overlap and you don't want to overlap, then just tear the excess off. You're going to see at one of the flowers that I end up doing that. And first of all, no one's going to know. Second of all, it doesn't matter. And third of all, it's going to look beautiful regardless. Speaking of beautiful, I did want to take a moment. I just want to tell you that you are beautiful. You matter and you are loved so much. I appreciate every single one of you. And I just wanted to tell you that I love you. I also want to thank you for all of your love and your comments. They are so special to me. I love reading each one. And as I'm getting through the pile and trying to respond, I want you to know that even if I haven't responded, I've read your comment. It does matter and it warms my heart. And if you're not already subscribed, this is a great time for you to pause the video again. Uh, subscribe. And if you liked the video, it really helps me out 
out if you like it and comment. It helps YouTube and its algorithm know that it is something that is worthwhile and that others might find it interesting. And that is something that is really helpful to me. And I really appreciate all that you guys do with that. A big old hug and kiss to all my Patreons. I love you guys so much. And I'm going to go ahead and set the rest of the video to music so that you can finish watching me assemble these flowers and trying not to burn my fingers. I think you saw one where I, <laughs> I dropped the flower. I'm pretty sure that was one of the moments where I got burned. But I thank you. Love you. Until next time. Bye.